Part six of A Lyriel or A Voyage to Other Worlds A Tale by Vladislav Laksima. This Librivox recording is in the public domain. Chapter twenty nine Jungfrau We got to N on the slopes of Jungfrau about noon on the twenty sixth. We lunched at a little auberge and then climbed up the slope pretending that we were merely on a walk and refusing a guide without much difficulty we reached the spot pointed out by Illyrial on the map after some three hours walking we sat down on a rock waiting the sunset slowly the orb of day sank to the west amid the glorious mountains the rosy tints of sunset were just beginning to adorn the peaks when i noticed coming towards me a figure wrapped in a large cloak who as he drew nearer i saw must be my mysterious friend oh i am so frightened said maud seizing my arm there he is i wish he had not come i wish i had never persuaded you to take this mad journey do not fear dearest all will be well god is overhead and will protect us besides there is nothing evil or unkind in this strange being i am glad you have come said posela for it was he my friends would like to see you before they leave earth they wish to see a man before they quit this world and thank you madam also for coming they will be glad to meet you he added to maud you are as welcome as your husband follow me it was easier said than done the ascent grew more and more difficult and in some parts rather dangerous. Illyrial had to help us in several places, but he said nothing, and I was, really, I must own it, too awed to trouble him with questions. The scenery was magnificent, but terrible. The sun had now set, and the alpine pinks were tinted with rose light. This grew dimmer and dimmer, till the cold white snows stood out against the black night sky still we followed our mysterious guide up the mountainside at length getting anxious i said is it much further it is dangerous to be on jungfrau in the dark and it soon will be dark we have almost arrived descend this gully he pointed to a small depression in the mountainside almost full of snow we following his direction glided down into it some thirty feet then he led us a few yards up the ravine to a vast snow pile and pointed to an opening cut in the snow taking maud by the hand he led her towards it she entered with him and i followed close a metal door stood in the snow Illyrial opened it a blaze of light came from within maud who was in front and thus could see more than i gave a sudden scream and fell backwards fainting in my arms what could it be as yet i had seen nothing but the light Illyrial took from his breast a phial and poured a few drops on her lips she revived almost at once crying out oh do not go in they are dreadful so unearthly who i said let me see I leant forward, and once, at least in my life, I beheld a scene plainly of another world. It was a small room, encrusted all over with crystals of every colour and strange ornaments in curious designs. It rose into a little dome-shaped roof, in the centre of which blazed a powerful electric light, which made all around glitter on the walls were fixed a dozen or so curious instruments of a nature quite unknown to me in the dome there fluttered a large eagle which had evidently been alarmed at maud's cry but this was not the curious part of the scene on the side of the room opposite to the door were two strange beings with large wings but who i noticed in a moment after were somewhat human in aspect with faces full of intelligence and of calm expression on their breasts were brilliant gorgets of jewels of diverse colours and down to their feet hung long robes of metallic tissue richly embroidered in singular designs 
it was indeed a combination of the bird type of life with human or more than human intelligence they looked at us as if with curiosity and interest and then each waving their hands for they had hands unlike the avian tribe over their heads in what looked like a gesture of greeting suddenly burst forth together in a short song of welcome soft sweet and enthralling it had a most weird and unearthly effect they seemed utter foreigners to us in every sense in nature in language in mode of greeting in fact they evidently were not of the earth this is our mode of greeting a stranger said illyrial every nation on earth has its diversity of customs surely another world must be distinct from earth in all things i bowed to the mysterious beings and entered the jewelled room maud stood at the threshold still awestruck but i beckoned her to come in also it was truly an unearthly scene i never realized till now how perfectly and cleverly illyrial had disguised himself to seem so human i looked around me all was quaint and unearthly but for all that beautiful crystals of every tint glittered around and about me in curious and quaint designs everything looked different to what we are accustomed to see it was impossible to conjecture what some things were for and why they were so made it was evident that nothing there was earthly all made by human hands you are cold said illyrial we can easily warm the car all the forces of nature are under our command here so saying he touched a metal knob on the side of the vault in a moment a warm breath seemed pouring down upon us from above i looked up and saw two of the ornaments in the roof glowing at white heat apparently under powerful electric action there was no seat in the room but illyrial took two downy couches and laid them at our feet bidding us to repose there and as he did so one of his strange companions reaching up unhung from one of the ornaments a large ruby vase full of grapes and bread and walking across offered them to maud she shrank at the approach of the strange being and turned to me as if for protection i thought to myself no human power can protect us here if these strange creatures with their wonderful command over the forces of nature chose to injure or kill us i felt how powerless humanity was in such a company illyrial noted the shrinking and consoled her do not refuse our friend as ariel you have never had the opportunity before of receiving from the hands of a being of another world the fruits of earth that vase i brought from the great ocean capital of mars so see three worlds the triad of which earth is centre and largest are here joined together the giver is from venus the fruits of earth the vase from mars accept pray his refreshment she took the fruit and bread he offered it to me and i accepted it also End of chapter 29